Hey folks, uh, my name is Mr. Howard. I am Marshall and Alden's dad, and um, I was an English teacher in Prince William County Schools for 13 years. And so today I'm going to start a class. I know it's kind of weird because you're gonna be watching me on YouTube and I'm not in the classroom with you, but I did that for a year. Um, you know, I was live, uh, but I recorded a bunch of videos and, and taught students in a virtual setting. And so it's not, it's not super weird for me. This is new software to me. Um, I had, I had different teaching software last year and I have to use sort of the business software that I have this year to work it out. Speaking of which, I'm not a teacher anymore. I am a professional writer. Uh, I write and edit, uh, business proposals for a living now. Uh, and so I've, I've taken my writing, uh, abilities that I use to teach and I've transitioned them to the business world. I also, um, am a fiction writer. I've got two novels, um, out there. So, uh, I guess that's a little bit of uh, background on me. I love literature. I, I love stories. Uh, I, I truly value the importance of writing. Writing is one of these skills that is absolutely essential um, to your futures and to your career and that you're going to do more and more and more of as time goes on. And the goal of this class uh, at the end of the day is that you become a better writer. Uh, this is about you. This is about um improving yourself and improving your writing abilities because each year of your life as you go through academics whether it's it's through homeschooling or whether it's a traditional school or whether it's when you go to college the demands for writing get more intense and more rigorous uh, you start out writing relatively short things and you end up if, if you go the route i went and you end up getting a literature degree you end up writing a master's thesis that's um over 100 pages long or you end up writing novels or you end up writing uh, proposals or, or whatever it ends up being so you know writing is an essential thing when i was uh, a bank teller because in another life before i became a teacher i worked at a bank all of the people that were were trapped in middle management that couldn't get into the higher positions were people who couldn't write their writing was full of errors and um the people in upper management assumed they were dumb. They weren't. They were, they were for the most part, really intelligent, hardworking people. They just weren't eloquent in writing and they had errors in what they wrote. And so they got judged. And so we want to make it so that you're successful in life and in your career. And one of the greatest assets that you can have is being able to express yourself in writing. Um, so anyway, let me, let me introduce the class here briefly. Uh, I have created a, hopefully that, here we go. I have created a um, Google Classroom. So hopefully you can all get a Gmail account, it's free. Uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll get emails out there. You can sign up for the Google Classroom. It's gonna be a writing class. And writing is, is primary, writing, history, and literature, these three things in this order. And um, you'll submit your papers online through the course. You'll see your assignments online through the course. Uh, you can ask me questions, you know, even though I'm not there physically with you, you could send me an email. Uh, these are going to be recorded to YouTube so you can write in the YouTube comments and I'm happy to answer them there. Uh, and Google classroom has a, um, venue on each assignment where you can write questions and I can answer them there as well. So there's going to be lots of back and forth, even though I'm not physically in the classroom with you. Um, I'm, I'm there with you in spirit. So, um, anyway, uh, let me let me go over the the class. The class is structured in sort of three elements, and the primary element is writing. Uh, I've sort of already gone over the what's the point for writing. Writing is an essential skill. Um, at the end of the day, your purpose in being in this class is that you take a snapshot of yourself now. What are your writing skills? What are you good at? What are you bad at? Where are the areas where you can improve? And then at the end of the course, you should take a second snapshot of where you're at and see the areas that you've improved in. I'm going to try and uh, give you feedback on each writing assignment that you submit, show you the areas where you've got weaknesses, where you need to improve, and hopefully you'll continue to do that as, as time goes on. So um, some areas that we're going to focus on in your writing is organization. Um, there's, there's different levels of organization that we'll look at. We'll look at how you organize a sentence. We'll look at how you organize a paragraph, and we'll look at how you organize a whole paper. And um, 
you know, it's sort of like a microscope. If you've ever played with a microscope where it has those different levels of magnification, um, you can look at your writing on different levels of magnification too. Sort of the global level, the whole paper, or the the middle level, which is the paragraph, or that really detailed specific level, which is um, the sentence. So we'll look at that. We'll look at your sentence structure. We'll, we'll even get down to the word choice. You know, your vocabulary says a lot about you and your abilities. And one of the things that I'm, I'm going to teach you is to elevate your vocabulary, but you shouldn't use words that you're not familiar with. Uh, so you can't just, you know, hit the thesaurus button and slap a word in there when you don't really know how that word would be used. Uh, so we'll work on on word choice and improving that. We'll talk about formatting a paper and grammatical choices. Um, that's always going to be individual. The truth is that no two people have the same problems grammatically. Um, and so trying to teach everybody grammar all at once, I don't think is a particularly useful endeavor. But uh, when you submit a paper, I can go over it um, and give you feedback on the grammar errors that you are making and help you improve your grammar as time goes on. So you should see improvements in your ability to organize and your ability to write in the word choice that you have and the way that you format things, the, the, the grammatical um, structure of your sentences, your use of quotation. Um, this is a history class. And in a history class, you need to base your arguments on direct quotation from experts. You're not an expert. So you can't quote yourself. Uh, you will be writing in your own voice, but in order for your arguments to be convincing, you need to take other people, experts in the field's words, and use them in your paper. So we'll work on how to identify quotations that are helpful to you, how to organize those quotations uh, so that you can prove a point, and then how to cite them, how to, how to put them in there without having them be um, what we call plagiarism, copying and pasting somebody else's words and ideas. Um, so we'll, we'll work on all that stuff in terms of writing. Uh, you know, the, the ultimate goal of the course is to get you familiar with academic writing, with the kinds of styles of writing that you will would be doing in, in high school and college classes. Uh, and nobody comes in with experience in this. You know, it's OK to, to not have um, strength in this area and to improve as time goes on. The goal is improvement. The goal isn't to start out perfect. If you start out perfect, you've got nothing to learn. So uh, please. Uh, continue to to work on that. Um, I'm in a public place. I'm at the wharf where my kids are swimming. So if you hear kids in the background talking, I'm trying to tune them out too. You know, it's it's how it is. Uh, so next uh, on our our sort of list of things that are important is history. Uh, this is a history class. Uh, history is an enormously important thing. I mean, you always hear that quote, you know, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And I think that's true. Uh, but, you know, we don't have a Most of us don't have the capacity to alter the timeline in any significant way. Uh, but it is important that you know where we came from so that you can accurately predict where we're going and make intelligent choices in your life. Um, and so I think history is important from that standpoint. But I, I a lot of times I feel like people have the wrong idea of, of what studying history is or what history is in general. Uh, it's not about memorizing dates. It's not about memorizing names. We're not going to do any of that kind of thing. What's important about history is that you have a timeline in your head, right, that you can inside your head sort of place things where they happened in the history of humankind or before. And so that timeline goes back to prehistoric times and dinosaurs, and it tracks forward all the way to the present day. And we can extrapolate where it's going to go from, from there. Not always accurately, uh, but the more you know about history, the better you can, can do those sorts of things. So, um, you know, I want you to think about where the Civil War falls on the timeline. Um, and I think that's, that's helpful to you. Uh, in fact, uh, when we talk about where the Civil War falls on the timeline, I think it's it's useful to have an overview. Um, we live in Virginia. Virginia is really the, the state where most of the Civil War took place. It happened all over the United States, but the vast majority of conflicts and battles happened here. And so you can't drive around Virginia without running into uh, signs directing you to this or that Civil War battlefield. And um, you know, there's there's images here that you can see that there are two sides. There's a North uh, Union and a South, the Confederacy, and that they had this fight um, and that Virginia is the farthest north of the Confederate states. And so that a lot of the battles happened here. Uh, so anyway, back to my. Back to my outline. Um, so we're going to we're going to 
use um, the Civil War as our focal point because we have a lot of history around us and we can use the history of this state uh, and we can go on on field trips and see some of the battlefields that we're talking about in the course. Uh, and I think that's a that's a great avenue. And then Civil War um, history and history in general allows us to write different types of papers. If it was just an English class, you'd end up writing literary analysis papers all the time. But with a history class, you can write um, you know, history reports on particular battles or on, you know, military technologies or on, um, I don't know, a anything of that nature. You could also write uh, biography papers about individuals and their contributions. So there's lots of different types of history papers we can write. We can also write um, literary analysis papers. We'll get, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll do some projects, uh, but it gives us a wide variety of material, but it's all unified under the umbrella of history. Um, again, we're going to focus on Virginia and um, particularly on military aspects. I, I am not a Civil War buff or a Civil War historian per se. My my father was really, and my father-in-law, both of them were really, really into the Civil War um, growing up. And so I've learned a lot from them. It's interesting because my I grew up in Vermont, uh, and uh, that's, that's about as far away from the Civil War as you can get. Uh, but my dad was always interested in the Civil War, and now I live in Remington, and uh, right next to Remington is this place called Brandy Station, and it, in Brandy Station, there's this house called Graffiti House, and it's this this place where uh, it was a hospital in this giant battle in the Civil War that happened right down the road from where I live, and we went and visited the house, and it turns out that one of the regiments that fought in the battle was a Vermont regiment, and their, their graffiti is all over the wall of that house, um, which is kind of cool. Um, that people from, you know, essentially my hometown and my home state were, were right where I'm living now fighting a battle in the Civil War. It's, that's the kind of stuff that I, I think is really interesting. Um, but when you look at Virginia and when you look at the Civil War, what we're talking about here, this is, this is a map of Civil War battlefields um, by year. This is 1861, the first year of the war. You can see that there's a number of battles that were fought in Virginia. Uh, you move on to 1862. Uh, we have we have more conflicts. Uh, here we are in Fauquier County. Um, you can see that some of them are right right in our dooryard. This is when the Peninsula came, campaign happened, and we'll talk about that. That's pretty cool. Um, then you move on to 1863, and they're all right here in our neck of the woods. Uh, Chancellorsville, uh, Middleburg, uh, Bristow Station, uh, Manassas Gap. I mean, there's there's a lot of fights right around us. 1864 sort of erupts and the war ends in 1865. You can see that the fighting has moved south by the end of the war. Um, this is all in union hands. Uh, so that's kind of cool. We'll, we'll track some of that. And I'll be looking at technology advancements. We'll be looking at tactics and leadership and um, some of the specific battles that happen in our backyard. And then hopefully we'll go there and check them out and that will be cool. So anyway, I, I keep getting off track. Um, we are going to focus, as we focus on Virginia, we're going to look at the Civil War. I think the easiest way to talk about the Civil War is to break it into two parts. We'll be looking at the Civil War pre-Gettysburg and post-Gettysburg. Gettysburg is this big battle that happened in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania that was the turning point of the war. Up until that point, it's hard to argue that it could have gone either way. The, the outcome is sort of inevitable when you look at a lot of the factors going into the war itself. But um, up until that point, the South had a military edge in almost all of the encounters that happened. And then after that point, it sort of flip flops and the inevitability turns into a steamroller that just continues to slowly move south. And um, there's really no coming back. And so we'll look at um, the Battle of Gettysburg um, as, a, as a lecture and talk as the turning point of the war. And that way you can sort of when you're already populating your timeline. Of, of the Civil War, right? Like before the Civil War, you know, we had the American Revolution, America became a country, and then um, you get to the Civil War, and after the Civil War is World War One. So if you're like me and you're military minded and you want to place these things on a spectrum, okay, you got Revolutionary War, War of 1812, uh, Mexican War, Civil War, and then uh, World War One after that, and you can sort of Spanish American Wars in there too. Uh, but you can sort of place it on the timeline. You can picture it there. And and the middle of the Civil War is Gettysburg. It starts out with the first Battle of Bull Run, ends with the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, and um, in the middle is Gettysburg. And so we'll look at those two parts. Uh, next thing, and I, I want to move on because I, I've already talked a long time and I don't want to – I want to get to some course material, not just do overview all day long. 
is we're going to be looking at literature. Again, I'm a I'm an English teacher. I'm a I'm a literature guy. I love stories, and I think it's important that we don't just study history. History doesn't give you the full story. It gives you all the facts. It lets you understand the cause and the effect. Uh, you can sort of look at maps and understand what's going on, but wars are fought by people, and people have this component called emotions. And in order to really understand war, in order to understand what goes on, you've got to get inside the human element of this. And the only way to do that is through the eyes of a human, and we do that through fiction, right? And so we're going to be reading sort of three books over the course of the story, uh, or course of this course. Yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, literature is, let, let me start with the what's the point. You know, like literature is, it's a fabulous thing to study because it's, it's part psychology and it's part history and it's uh, part philosophy. And it's, it's all interesting. You know, every human being who's ever lived since the beginning of time has been struggling with the same question. Uh, what does it mean to be a human being living a mortal life on the planet Earth? We're all trapped within the, the confines of our own mortality, and we're all trying to find the meaning of life and the purpose of our existence. And every author is, is writing about that. And uh, you get their take, and, and it's set in a setting, and all the things that we're going to read in this course are set in the Civil War. Um, so that's that's our setting, but they're all dealing with the same thing that every author has always dealt with. Um, and every book is about sort of two settings, and I think that's something we'll have to talk about too. They're about the time in which they're set, but they're also about the time in, what they're, in which they were written. So um, the author is struggling with their own life and to understand their own life, and they're doing that through fiction. And uh, they, they pick a setting, and they write a story, and they pick the characters, uh, but those characters tell us about the author. They tell us about the author's time, but they also tell us about the time in which they were set, which in this case is a civil war. So we'll learn a lot. Uh, through through the study of literature. So the three books we're going to read, we're going to start with The Red Badge of Courage. Uh, it's a classic by this guy named Stephen Crane. Um, it is about a young soldier named Henry, who actually I think I can. Hey, The Red Badge of Courage. Um, so Henry Fleming dreams of the thrill of battle and performing heroic deeds in the American Civil War, but his illusions are shattered when he comes face to face with the bloodshed and horrors of war. Now he's a raw recruit. Henry experiences both fear and self-doubt. Will war make Henry a coward or a hero? A vivid fictionalized account of the experiences of an ordinary innocent soldier on the battlefields of the American Civil War. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter, but that's that's essentially the, the idea behind um, the Red Badge of Courage. I'm gonna use this as an introduction to literature. I'm gonna teach you a lot of literary analysis terminology. I'm going to teach you how to think about a story in terms of theme and what the author is trying to get across to you. It's gonna be something that is going to cross over very well when you go and, and study literature um, in your future high school, homeschool careers or in college. Um, so I'll teach you all the ways to analyze and sort of dissect a, a story, the way the author structures it, um, the characters, the way they structure um, the story of the character, the character's arc from beginning to end, and what, what we can learn thematically from that. I'm going to read this one out loud and do the analysis in a way that models um, good analytical behaviors, and hopefully that uh, will be interesting to you. Uh, we may not be able to watch all of them in class. You may have to watch some of them at home, but... Um, Hopefully that's that's interesting. Uh, the next novel we're going to read, you're going to read on your own. It is called The Killer Angels. It's by Michael Shara. It's another classic written in the 1980s uh, about the Battle of Gettysburg. And so after we've talked about Gettysburg in class. Oh, and by the way, The Red Badge of Courage is about the Battle of Chancellorsville, which happened before Gettysburg. Um, Chancellorsville is a battlefield. It's about a half an hour from my house. Uh, hopefully we'll go there. Uh, either before or after reading the Red Badge of Courage, and you'll be able to, you know, walk the ground that the story is set on and think about it and get a perspective on it that not a lot of people who read it do. Um, book's been read by millions of people. It's been um, a staple in classrooms since since I was in school back in the 90s and before, and uh, you'll be able to actually walk the battlefield, and I think that's cool. So anyway, um, The Killer Angels is about the Battle of Gettysburg. It's told from both perspectives, the perspective of a guy named Chamberlain, who is uh, on the Union side, and uh, General Longstreet, who is on the um, Confederate side. And 
here is your background on that one, you know, just for fun. The Killer Angels, a classic novel of the Civil War. After more than a quarter of a century and three million copies in print, Michael Shara's Pulitzer Prize winning Civil War classic, The Killer Angels, remains as vivid and powerful as the day it was originally published. This handsome new hardcover edition introduces a whole new generation to Shara's. Ma- oh, it doesn't matter. We're not reading the handsome new hardcover edition, but whatever. It doesn't matter what edition you have. July 1863, the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia is invading the North. General Robert E. Lee has made this daring and massive move with 70,000 men in a determined effort to draw out the Union Army of the Potomac and mortally wound it. His right hand is General James Longstreet. He's one of our protagonists, a brooding man who is loyal to Lee but stubbornly argues against his plan. Opposing them is an unknown factor. General George Meade, who has taken command of the army only two days before what will perhaps be the crucial battle of the Civil War. In the four most bloody and courageous days of our nation's history, two armies fight for two conflicting dreams. One dreams of freedom, the other of a way of life. More than rifles and bullets are carried into battle, the soldiers carry memories, promises, love, and more than men fell on those Pennsylvania fields. Bright futures, untested innocence, and pristine beauty are the casualties of war. So that's that's enough for you to go on, I think. The third thing that we're going to do in terms of literature and literary analysis is poetry. No English class would be complete without a little bit of an analysis of poetry. Analyzing poetry is great because uh, poems are so small. They're not a huge reading investment on your part. And we can get down to the level of specific words and the meanings of those words and uh, sentence structure and and some of the really key analysis that it's kind of hard to do in a giant novel. So we're going to take a look at a uh, series of poems called Drum Taps by one of the most famous uh, American poets, Walt Whitman. Um, I don't have a fancy cover on this one, but let me read this to you. And that's going to be towards the end of the course. Walt Whitman worked as a nurse in an army hospital during the Civil War and published Drum Taps, his war poems, as the war was coming to an end. Later, the book came out in expanded form, including When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed, Whitman's Whitman's passionate elegy for Lincoln, the most moving and enduring poetry to emerge from America's most tragic conflict. Drum taps also helped create a new modern poetry of war, a poetry not just a patriotic exhortation, but if I can't see, it's behind something. Anyway, um, we'll do some poetry analysis of war poems, and uh, that'll be towards the end of the class. Um, Maybe we can read some of them at a battlefield, and that would be cool as well. So we can talk a little bit about the workload. Um, you know, your most of your work is going to be sort of in three things, and and we'll have a fourth thing at the end. So um, if you go to the course, can I zoom this in? It's going to let me. Oh, hey, it does. Hey, look at that. Cool. Um, so the schedule of assessed assignments. I'm trying to give you a paper a month. I don't want these to be enormously long papers. The minimum length is five paragraphs. You're going to have three body paragraphs, an introduction, and a conclusion on these papers. Some of the papers aren't papers. They're, they're, you'll have a presentation instead, but um, we're going to start with October. You won't have to do one this month. Um, it's a short turnaround anyway. I mean, you're already um, close to the end of the month. We'll have one paper due in October. It's going to be a compare and contrast paper. Um, you'll pick some aspect of the North and the South dichotomy and compare them. Maybe you'll be interested in comparing their economies. Maybe you're interested in the culture. Maybe you're interested in their leadership. Maybe you're interested in their military capabilities. Uh, There's a lot of things that, or technology or industry. I mean, we're going to be looking at, at two things that, that we can look at how they compare and how they contrast with each other and, and draw some conclusions. So that'll be kind of fun. A compare and contrast paper is one of the easier papers to write. It's a good one to introduce ourselves to uh, because it's a fruitful style of paper. If you learn the style, if you learn how to do it and manage it, you can use it um, in the future a number of times. So we'll look at that. Uh, in November, you'll be writing a history report on a local battle. That means a Virginia battle that occurred before Gettysburg. In December, you'll have a literary analysis paper on the Red Badge of Courage. We'll have read it by that point. In January, I'm going to have you write a biography paper on a union political or military figure. I'm not interested in um, Confederate political or military figures. Um, they're glorified enough. Let's let's take a look at the, the northern side. Um, and then um, February is going to be a history report on tactics and technology. 
one or the other. Um, you know, you want to study how how the cavalry tactics worked in, in the Civil War. That's cool. You do that. Um, you're interested in steam engines or maybe you're interested in ironclads. Um, that would be cool, too. Uh, or the development of trench warfare. That would be an interesting thing to write about. So there's lots of cool stuff to write about there. Um, in March, we'll have a literary analysis paper on the Killer Angels, that Gettysburg book we were talking about. Uh, you'll have finished it at that point in April. Uh, I'll have a biography presentation. This is a first presentation on a woman or minority figure. Um, they often get overlooked in analyses of the Civil War, and I want everybody to pick a different one, and we'll have a presentation and learn about them as a class. Um, in May, we're going to have a poetry analysis paper on the Civil War, and then in June, we'll have a final project due. It'll be on a local battle after Gettysburg, but you're going to have some options on that. Um, you could create a diorama or you could, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it, but I am I am open to any number of creative project ideas. You want to you want to make a diorama out of Lego, you just go right ahead. You want to do it in Minecraft, you go right ahead. So there's lots lots of cool um, possibilities. Um, you let me know what you want to do. You want to sew, I don't know, a, a uniform and talk about that. I think there's there's lots of cool ways that we could um, engage our creativity and apply our knowledge from the class and create a final project that's meaningful. Um, you see that some of these papers have stars on them. Um, if you would like to do a second presentation, you're welcome to do a presentation instead of a paper on any of those. That's that's perfectly cool with me. Um, I think that that sort of covers that. So um, when we're looking at the workload, the papers are the main part of the workload. Uh, and, and part of that involves doing research and finding quotations that you're going to use in your papers. And we'll go over that uh, with the first paper and it will become sort of old hat. That's that's another thing that you're going to gain a skill in being able to do research and apply that research and use it in your writing. So we'll we'll improve that skill as the year goes on as well. Um, so papers and research. Also, you got a novel to read. Um, I'm going to read one for you and you just have to watch and learn. But you're going to have to read uh, The Killer Angels. Uh, so that's that's a novel you're going to read. We'll do the poetry together, too, because poetry is kind of tricky that way. Um, and then uh, You'll have presentation and a project, and that's that's sort of the whole class. When we talk about assessment, um, you're going to be uh, submitting your work online, and I will give you online feedback. So if if you all get a Gmail account, then you can use Google Docs, and Google Docs is great. You submit your paper to me in Google Docs, and you allow me editing privileges, and so then I can go through the paper, and I can write a bunch of suggestions and give you editing feedback, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share screen, and I will record feedback just like I'm giving this lecture, and uh, at the end of, of that, I'll save it to a private YouTube file and send it to you. And so with each paper, you'll get my feedback on your writing um, that you can look at in the Google Doc, but you'll also get a video of me trying to talk you through some of the things that, that you might have struggled with in your writing. And hopefully you can use those lessons and apply them to the next paper in each paper is an opportunity to identify the areas you need to work on and continue to improve. So um, anyway, I'm excited about the class. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, I want to do an overview of the Civil War, but I'm going to save this video and uh, start a second one, and that'll give you a second to stand up and walk around and, and ask questions to uh, parents who are there and, um, you know, anything like that. So thank you. Uh, it's going to be a second because I am not super skilled at what I'm doing here. It is a new um, thing for me. So let's see if I go here and stop share. No, I stop the share. Okay. And I go here and I stop recording.